my intentions for the November election to succeed Senator Byrd. But before I make my announcement, I want to reflect on my campaign. And I think uh, one of the reasons that uh, I got only 17% of the vote at the August 28th primary is the fact that uh, many, many people looked at my chronological age of 95 and decided the actuarial tables indicate that I might not survive a term in the Senate, even though I strenuously tried to, do, to uh, convince many voters throughout the state that I was fully capable. During the steamy month of August, the August month in West Virginia's history, I woke up every morning full of pea and vinegar, ready to go out and do battle. And I've been all over the state of West Virginia, as far north as the Northern Panhandle, where I gave a talk at Wheeling Jesuit University, as far south as Mercer County, where I gave a friendly talk at the Mercer County Fair, and as far east as Berkeley County, where I attended a large rally in Jefferson High School in Martinsburg. And that was a very interesting meeting because initially I declined the invitation to speak there because the meeting was sponsored by the League of American Voters which was identified as a right-wing organization. But after I once declined, I decided to, to attend. And I got a very excellent reception there. The president of the League of American Voters, Mr. Thomas, even came up to me after the program had concluded, he had a copy of the Bridge of Ramagan with me, with him, which he wanted me to autograph. So, in addition to attending friendly rallies like I did in Morgantown on the steps of the Mountain Lair where the students of West Virginia University showed up on mass. That particular <coughs> rally was organized by the Highlands Conservancy. But everywhere I went, I got uh, positive receptions. I attended two Tea Party rallies in Nitro and in Parkersburg, both of which were attended by a huge number of visitors who shot questions at me, which I was able to handle to their satisfaction. But here again, I think the 70% of the vote which I got on the 28th of August was not a very good measure of the opposition to uh, mountaintop removal, which I think was reduced by the fact that people were voting not against mountaintop removal, but were actually voting against my age of 95. I'm pleased that my good friend Larry Gibson is here with me this afternoon because you all know the fact that uh, 
Larry Gibson is the number one opponent of Mount Tropamool because he's experienced it on Kayford Mountain where thousands of people from throughout this nation and from a number of foreign countries have come to Kayford Mountain to see the mountaintop removal operation in practice. They can stand up on a ridge on Kayford Mountain and see the, the blasting <coughs> of the top of the mountain, which starts this devastating practice. Which seriously hurts people in the valleys into whose front yards have been dumped all of the trees, the rocks, and the soil that does not contain coal, frequently interrupting the validity of the aquifers as a result of the blasting so that many people in those rural areas who have their own water wells discover that they are either polluted or gone completely dry.